Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for being here today. And I know it was negligent yesterday when I did not wish you all a happy new year, and I'd like to offer that also out to all the Broncos fans. I expressed this to the team yesterday. A wise man once said, uh, for all that has been, thanks, and for all that is to come, yes. So we've been through a lot around here, and our players have, coaches have, fans have. We recognize that, and we say thanks. We're grateful for all the challenges we've had because it's put it in a place to improve ourselves. And we've taken that attitude. <clears throat> and for all that is to come, yes, bring it on. We're looking forward to it. We're prepared. We're going to make the best of the situation that we are dealt with here. And I really had a good vibe today when I was with the team. Um, best way to describe it, I think, is that they're really disappointed, but they're certainly not discouraged. I challenged them to look at the tape with their coaches, make the corrections necessary. And for all the good things that are on that tape, it was not good enough. So for all that we were striving to be yesterday, we want to do that and better. We need to improve. And I need to improve as a coach to try to make that happen. And I'm committed to doing that. So we're going to have a great week of practice. I'm really looking forward to getting back with these guys on Wednesday. Things are early part of this week now are a little bit more normal for them and the coaching staff. I think our preparation will be a little better on point. We made too many mistakes down the stretch that hurt us and some during the early parts of the game as well. So we look to eliminate those and uh, plow forward. We seek to grab this victory in our last game of the year. There's so much to play for, and we recognize that. We're grateful for the opportunity. This is the National Football League. We had two players this last game that played in their very first NFL game, and it's, a, it's an incredible thing to, to see that uh, these young men <clears throat> are able to step on the NFL field for the first time, and we, we honor Ray and Isaiah in that regard. And so with that, I'll uh, open up for questions. Yes, sir. Yeah, Jerry. Um, there was a report last week that uh, on your full pad or on your half padded practice, that some of the players uh, didn't like that. And when you come in and you make some changes and you maybe meet some resistance because people are used to doing something, uh, you know, the old way. How do you deal with that as uh, as the new boss? Well, with regard to the first part of your question in the. The reports, well, I don't know where those reports are coming from. I don't know who they're talking to. I don't know the veracity of those reports, so I'm not going to comment on that. But I didn't hear anything from the players. They, were, they went out there, and I thought we had a really good practice on Wednesday. It's a really tough practice to have. And then Thursday, we went out there in pads. I didn't hear a word about it, and I thought we did well with it. We got everything we wanted to get out of that practice. I wanted to see this team in pads, and we got that done. <clears throat> so. Whatever the reports are, the reports are, I would say. Now that you have, you know, sort of like one full week, do, does the early part of the week, the way you want to do it, look different than? Well, I've, I've got more time to watch tape for me personally. I mean, our coaches have been doing this for some time, and our players are, are in a groove. I didn't change any of that schedule. Well, I, I did, to Mike's question, move, change some things and do some things differently, and there's always going to be opinions on that. But, uh, you know, when... You change is tough on everybody, but I didn't hear, come here to, to please everyone. It's no way to do that, and I don't mind contending with, with someone who, if they, have, if they have a good point, I'm going to listen to it. But uh, in the end, I'll make what's decision what's best for the team in that regard. The success in the AFC West <coughs> has been emphasized highly here. Guys have talked about win the West, being on the wall yeah. in the building, the T-shirts, but that success hasn't been there. This year, how critical is it to have an opportunity this weekend to, to get a win in the division, and how important is that moving forward for this football team? Yes, I, I recognize the importance of the West. But more importantly for me at this point in time, I recognize the importance of this win for our team and our fans. I don't care who we're playing this weekend. It's still going to be really important. I don't think you can ramp up the importance of this game just because it's the, the Chargers. It doesn't register with me. Perhaps I don't have a real good feel for the West, but divisional games are always really important in the National Football League, and that should be and is a goal of most teams in this league because that's how you get to the playoffs. That's the natural path. The past 
games that this team has suffered through in the AFC West, I recognize, but that's not where I'm looking. I'm looking at this game as an opportunity for our players, our fans to enjoy a win. I want to see our guys in the locker room celebrate with one another. I want to have them a good have. I want to allow them to have a good feeling when they leave the locker room and go see their families. That's my goal. Coach, one of the biggest moves you made yesterday was making Montreal Washington inactive. Uh, can you just explain why you did that, and, and what does he need to do this week to become active on, on game day? Well, I think I explained last week that someone asked me about Montreal, and I explained that I have a very high opinion of his skill set. Uh, he's a young player, and he needs to take those skill sets and develop fundamentals. I've been working with those returners on the side during the course of this week, as have other coaches, and uh, he improved. He, he made some improvements. Now, the roster just laid out in such a fashion that we wanted a certain set of players up in the entire roster for that game, and his contributions were not as significant as others to me, and I made that call on Montreal. And as far as this coming week's concerned, he's going to have another week of practice where I expect him to improve. That's usually what you want to do when you go out and practice. That's why you're there. And we'll make that decision on Sunday. We'll probably make it on Saturday and announce it on Sunday. And uh, we'll see where he fits in. It's uh, going to be a new week. Coach, so much of the talk about this team's future revolves around Ken Russell, Wilson rebound. Did we see a structure in an offense yesterday where he can be successful in your mind moving forward? I liked the way it was set up by our offensive coordinator, Justin Outen, and also our passing game coordinator, Clint Kubiak. And we had uh, lengthy discussions on what this was uh, going to look like. And while I will say we got started down that path, I'm not. Just, I'm certain we're not at a finished product yet. But um, we've been taking in consideration a lot of things when we make our offensive game plans. Of course, the opponent, and what, where we have players at certain positions. And uh, Russell Wilson is at the apex of that. You know, what does Russell, Russell do well, and how can we assist him? I think I said that in here last week. We want, to, we want to do the things that he does well, and we want him to be fully bought in to those things. And I really believe that happened last week. And as I said earlier in this, this gathering, <clears throat> we have to, whatever we did yesterday, it needs to be better next week. Jerry, being a head coach <clears throat> in a game for the first time, how much did the experience mesh with maybe your preconceived expectations? And how much and what was different than you might have expected? That's a really good question because I've, I, I've been contemplating that. I really have. I, <clears throat> you know, you never really know until you get there, right? It's true with anything, any new endeavor. <clears throat> and uh, when I walked out there, after all the things that I had to do in the locker room, usually as a special teams coach, I'm in there early guy. I go out in the field early and I watch all the specialists and I keep an eye on the other team and, and so forth. But now that I have these other responsibilities, I couldn't get out there until late. So. When my son and I walked out in the field, it was like, wow, oh, there it is. So, but it was, it was a great feeling. It was a, it was a humbling moment of great gratitude that I could walk out there and experience what that was like. <clears throat> but I will say this, during the game, I felt like I was coaching football. And I, I know, I've, as I said, I mean, I didn't sleep a whole lot last night when I got back, but I, I've been thinking about that. And during the game, I felt completely into the game and relaxed and Somebody asked me here last week, I think, are you nervous? And during the game, I was, I was coaching just like I was coaching before. I just had more on my plate. And I want to thank all the coaches that uh, put up with me on the headset yesterday, I guess the best way to put it. I, <clears throat> I made a number of uh, switching errors, let's call them, on my, on my microphone. And I would find myself in different places at different times. And I would be, have to be slapped back to my appropriate place. And I want to thank the game management team, Brad Miller and Mark Thews, too. They were a great help, along with Derek Haithcock, my assistant. I thought, overall, I, I made some decisions that I would reconsider, I guess is the best way to say that. But overall, to your point, I felt like it was uh, where I belonged, real frankly. Thank you for your question. It was a very thoughtful question. Jerry, looking back to that uh, October <clears throat> matchup against the Chargers, defense did a pretty good job sh shutting Austin Eckler down. Is yeah. there anything you can take from that a blueprint, or is that kind of so long ago, got to throw it yeah, out Yeah, real frankly, for me, it's so long ago, but I'm certain it's not so long ago for our coaches that are coaching against them. I, I'm 
as you can probably understand, I'm really leaning on our coordinators. Uh, I haven't had a chance yet to watch tape. I, I, I love watching football. I found myself enthralled this morning going through the whole game, every play, and, and writing things down. I've got pages and pages of notes, and, and then I had to condense them into something that I could present to the team at 12.30, and I, it, it became a triage of, like, what's the most important thing here? Because I don't want to take up all their time. And so I'm really looking forward to your question. I'm really looking forward to getting in there and watch, starting watching the tape because last week I wasn't re really able to do that and getting ready for the Kansas City team because the time did not allow it. Jerry, in a three-point loss, there were two plays at the end of each half that loomed <coughs> large. Um, Russell was, was sacked um, yeah. by the defensive back coming off the edge right at the end of the first half fumbles the ball. And then, again, the fourth and two play. As you went back and, and looked at those, anything you would have done differently or what did you just see that, that – could have changed the outcome there. Yeah, I'm going to be real frank with you. I, the end of the first half, I told the team in there that I didn't like the timeouts I took, or the timeout I took, the order in which I took them. I, after having evaluated, at the moment, it didn't really feel right. And what, it may be by the book, it may not be. People have different ways of looking at that book. Um, but I was provided with information, and I, as best that I could discern, the, the timeout I took uh, on the first, the second timeout, I, I think it would have been better utilized at the end of the next play, real frankly, and because we are in so close proximity to the hash, and it just so so happened I was I had every intention of doing it, but it ended up in such close proximity to the hash. And Cortland Sutton was just a beast yesterday. I just love the way that man plays, and he was right on the ball. The ball was right on the spot, and you probably saw what happened on the next play. The balls they were grabbing guys and holding guys up like most NFL defenses are wise to do and uh, we didn't get on the ball as quickly as I'd liked and it resulted in that play so I'm yeah in self-evaluation if you want to critique the game management I'm here I am um, with regard to the last play of the game <clears throat> you know I wasn't real pleased with some things that went on in the game with regard to the officiating I we talked about that yesterday uh, and I also think I express my respect for those men that do that job. It's a very difficult job. It's a very complicated job, and they have to do it in a split second, and then everybody watches on TV, and they replay it in slow motion, and they criticize the guys that made the call. <clears throat> I didn't like the, the fourth and two call in two different ways, and I expressed my disappointment, I think. What was the word I used? Uh, unfortunate. Yes, thank you. Unfortunate. Because I, I reacted instinctively to the what I thought was an offsides because that's what it is. It's instinct. I've watched enough football to provide myself with instinct to see that and know that it's offsides. But when you look at it in slow motion and you slow it down and you look at the lines as best you can with the angles, and it could have gone either way, real frankly. It could be in the neutral, could, he could have been in the neutral zone, maybe not. And when we snapped the ball there, when we thought it was in the neutral zone, the, the play kind of unraveled. And then the second part of that play was uh, really unfortunate. I guess I would say it. You know, it's a tough way to. I I, uh, I, I liked our chances going down the field there. I was encouraged by how we were we given ourselves an opportunity to win, and uh, I wanted that play. I wanted another shot at it. We didn't get it. Got to be better next week. Yes, sir. Final two <clears throat> Coach, um, first of all, your popularity amongst the fan base is growing at a very rapid pace, and I'm not sure if you're aware of that or not. I'm not much spending much time evaluating that. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> although a lot of people, I think, would like to see you return in one capacity or another. But that, but that being said, what I wanted to ask you is you, you've talked about planting seeds. Yes, sir. And, and I'm, I'm curious, in your opinion, if the seeds are planted carefully and tended the right way, when they bloom, nice. what does it look like? And, and how quickly do you think that could happen? Well, what they look like is you have a football team that's healthy. You have a football team that's uh, cohesive, they're playing with one another. You have a football team that plays rough, tough, nasty football right up to the edge of the line. You have a football team that picks each other up the, off the pile. You have a fully coordinated three-phase system where the you play complementary football where the offense and the defense are integrated, where the special teams assist both sides. You have a, an offensive system run by a coordinator that understands 
how to play winning football and a defensive coordinator that understands how he does that within the framework of the rest of the team. And you have a special team that pr protects the kickers that is efficient in the return game and does a great job of covering kicks. You put all those three things together and uh, you end up playing winning football. It's a tough league. It's, the margins are so narrow, so very narrow. <clears throat> and just little efficient plays such as such as Kendall, you, we watched Kendall returning punts yesterday. Now, I had never seen him do it, so I didn't know what it looked like, but he did exactly what we asked him to do. And uh, then you watch the last play. You may have seen the first two. And the last play, he understood the situ situation in the game, so he's feeling the ball in the 10-yard line. <clears throat> so he's got to take more risk. Because why? Because we're behind and we need field position. And he pops out of there with a 17-yard return to get us in a place where we can go down the field and win the game. And just teaching an understanding of how those situations work, along with game management, being able to put those players in those situations, like we talked about the end of the half play and defense, and, and uh, after that unfortunate turnover, uh, we gave up a play. And uh, with plenty of space, we didn't need to give up that play, and our coaches know that. Our players now have assessed that. But that's an example of teaching the game where you understand what's coming, and you, you know that uh, those kind of plays are going to happen. And, you know, they don't get an opportunity at that field goal. But you know, we're thankful for that opportunity. We really were. All that happened, you know, it was a bad deal, but we're thankful for that because we blocked the kick. Coach, for you guys last week, there was a lot of change, and so sometimes change brings uncertainty, and there's a lot of moving pieces. Your guys rallied for you this week. They played relatively hard. How do you ensure, and the coaching staff ensure that that message doesn't, you know, kind of fall to the wayside, and they can maintain that? Uh, I, I hate to disagree with your question, but they didn't rally for me. That I had nothing to do with it. It was them. They rallied for them. They rallied for these fans. They've they've got so much more invested than me. These coaches have so much more invested than me. I was sitting on my dock drinking coffee, you know. And here I am standing in front of you. So it wasn't about me, and it's not going to be about me this week. I want those players to come off the field on Sunday, go in the locker room and hug each other and laugh. I want them to go out in the parking lot where their family is, and their wives are happy, and their children are laughing. I want the fans to be cheering them. I want them to see them drive away from the stadium, and they're, they're waving at them instead of you know, giving them the raspberry. I, I, I want these guys and these families and these fans to to experience the joy. Winning is its own reward. You know, we can talk about the streaks, the negative things, but I'm not trying to end any negative streak. I'm not going to go tell these guys, well, don't lose again. You know, that's, that's, that's silly. So we're going to go out there and we're going to play with passion. Hopefully we play better than we played yesterday. And uh, hopefully we get in the locker room and we celebrate. That's what I'm looking for. Thank you. Thank you.